is Taya. Um, so timely you're asking this, because like, that's kind of been something that I've been pondering myself. Good question. Um, I am a man still discovering himself every single day. I'd be lying if I said I had like a, a clear definition of who I am. Who am I? That's such a big question. So I'm a passionate person. I'm passionate about people. I'm passionate about my purpose. I'm passionate about the kingdom and the things of God. I'm a person that enjoys bringing value and light to other people, or as many people as I possibly can. I know who I used to be. I have an understanding of who I am becoming. Right now, I don't have a super clear understanding because I'm changing, right? I'm constantly evolving. evolving. I'm continuously renewing my mind. Therefore, I'm growing. I'm a work in progress and a story unfolding. A man who loves Jesus and has been transformed by him, but a man just like anybody else. I know I'm here for a purpose and here for a reason, and I'm just living every day trying to discover what that reason is. I'm still on the journey of discovering myself. I feel like I learn new things about myself, like every day, every month, every year, you know? So like... Still learning who I am. Discovering who I am has been a long process. When it came to me discovering who I am, I had to learn who I was not. It was the things that I thought I wanted that realistically led me down a path that caused me to eventually lose myself or who I thought was myself. I defined myself in many different ways because of the way that people thought I was, the way that people saw me. I would find myself kind of catering to the environments that I was in. Just kind of blend in and fit in. When you are a child, you people kind of tell you who you are at that point. I thought everything that made me comfortable when I was working defined me and made me who I was. And it wasn't until later in my life that I really had to kind of just come to terms with who is Ren, like for real, not just based off of the faith of my parents and not just based off of um, the environments and the people that are around me. I've been unlearning who I thought I was, so I've been constantly in this process of, oh, that's not me, I'm, I act that way and I flow that way because of things I've experienced, from things that people have said about me. Having to uh, release the character uh, of other people's expectations. People's negative perceptions of me used to weigh me down so much, especially people that I really, really respected. Like, I put them in a position where their words had so much weight, so when they would say something, I took it like that was who I am. It's really insane, like, how just, like, one thing that a person says, and they could mean well, just literally shut down my voice for years, and, like, this person doesn't even know that. It's crazy because there was a time in my life, like, where she actually said the opposite about me and said something really empowering about me to me. I was like, if I had not spent, like, all of my life under this cloud that, you know, this person said about me that made me feel limited. You know, how much further would I have been in my life? But for so long, I was living out of a place of what I thought was me. But like, who is Ren? Who is Wen when she is lonely, depressed, angry? Or who is Ren when she's excited and she's on fire and she's passionate? I was letting my friends, my family, my surroundings, social media, my experiences, what I saw on TV. I was allowing all of that to tell me who I was. It's really just like me daring to be open and vulnerable with people. I know that's something that I struggle with. I struggle pretty bad with like pride and just feeling like, yeah, I would say like I have to have everything together. I met myself at my lowest low. I met myself when I thought I really needed someone, and then I realized that they were only taking me further than who I wanted to be and who I was supposed to be. When I met myself on the other side of that, it was true freedom. That's where the trust comes in is, okay, if you created me this way, I'm gonna learn to accept those things, and I'm gonna learn to see those things well, rather than fight them off. Because if I'm fighting them off, I'm working against a perfect creator with perfect vision. So I could learn to accept what God says about me and learn to accept the way God sees me versus fighting it off. I don't need anything to validate me but God. And now that I have that, that understanding that the validation that I need is already within me, I'm able to add to rooms differently now.
right? I don't go in a room expecting people to give me something. I go in a room saying, hey, I got this to add. How can we work together? Sit with God for a second. Ask him who you are. And it was in those moments, I actually had a name change. My name um, is Lauren Taylor Roberts. And I remember God telling me one day, there is another version of you that you have yet to meet. And it's a version of you that does not feel like you have to succumb and bow down to what people's expectations of you are. There's a you that's more free and that's more liberated. And there's something about God's love that is so vigorous and so after you that helps you to lose all the other things and helps you to just hone in on his vision and his word over you alone. And that's when I really started to find out who I was was sitting with God every day. I'm more tuned into how the day could flow differently now. You know, the Holy Spirit speaks to me more now because I'm like open to it, you know? When I got in relationship with God, the more that we would walk together, the more that we would talk together, I was learning more who I was because of the way He saw me. The reason I say relationship with God is because without that, I would not know who I am. And there's a level of trust to that that you have to have because if God created you and you're His son like He calls you, then you have to trust that He sees you better than you see yourself. It was an awakening, like a spiritual awakening, for me to discover that there was more to me than what I was privy to. He began to tell me who I was all along, just like he did with Jeremiah. He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Meaning that there was a version of Jeremiah that God knew before Jeremiah was even Jeremiah. God knew him, and I'm discovering that for myself. It's been a long journey and it's still continuing to unfold. I wish I knew that it was okay to still be discovering who you are. I met me when I accepted myself. That's when I met me. That's when I learned that everything that's in me is literally a light. I think yeah, in moments where I'm faced with something that I feel like is beyond me, that's definitely when I find the most self-discovery. And now that I have somewhat of a, a holistic approach to pouring out and being pouring back into, I don't have communities or people around me where they can't pour back into me if I pour out to them. And if we're both pouring, we can pray for each other. We can ask, Holy Spirit, fill us back up. Holy Spirit, I could pray for myself too. That's the biggest thing. If you can't pray for yourself in any of this, you're missing it. You have to be able to ask God and access the Holy Spirit for yourself. But I'm glad that I have a community around me that could pour back into me when I'm in my lowest spaces. And recognizing that after I pour, I need to be full. I literally can't wait to continue to express my heart through my music, my heart through my, my, my gifts and my, my crafts um, that God has blessed me with to the world. I would say my favorite thing that I have discovered thus far, that if I could package up, wrap in a bow, fit inside of an Amazon package, would be me. Because I'm gonna come with my story, I'm gonna come with my background, I'm gonna come with my uniqueness, I'm gonna come with my giftings, I'm gonna come with this fingerprint that only I have and that only you have, because you were designed that way. That would be the gift, the gift of me, the gift of you. I would say run towards healing run towards it because there are so many things on the other side of who you think you're supposed to be. There's so much power in your testimony. Like every single thing you have been through is for a reason and God will use it for your good. My nine years of toxic relationships have helped me tell my story, but it's also helped bless others. Your experiences have so much glory if you just allow God to use them. You sit with them, you sit in them, you sit with him. He walks you through it. It's a beautiful, beautiful journey. Just face that thing and be, be patient with yourself because you deserve it. I think the greatest thing that I've discovered about myself thus far is that I'm resilient and I can fight my way through things. Uh, I've definitely had some weeks, sometimes even full months, where I really felt kind of sad and uh, just, just underwhelmed with the way that my life has been going just in the past few months. I have big goals for myself and so when I feel like I'm not meeting those goals, it, it can take me into kind of just a, just a not great place. And so I, I know that I, I have t had times where I felt just not feeling like I was doing enough. And uh, you know, it's taken me a long time, I would say, to, to get to a point where I felt like, you know what, 
I can still push past it. You know, if I miss the mark here, it's okay. I can keep running, I can keep going. And I think a lot of people get to that low point and just stay there because they can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. Usually, uh, when I'm faced with something that's bigger than me, I'm just like, all right, I have to do this and I'm gonna do it to my best ability. In the moment, I don't shy back, even though when thinking about it, like beforehand, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know, I'm gonna be shy and I'm gonna feel like this. Every time that I'm actually faced with it and I'm in the moment with it, I trust God. I'm like, God, I'm giving it to you because it feels like it's beyond me, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it because I, I know that this is where I'm supposed to be. So I'm gonna rise to the plate. I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. And when I don't have anything else to do, I'm just gonna give it up to him and, and let him take over from there. If I did not have resistance in my life, if I didn't go through seasons that were so tough and so heartbreaking and so disappointing, I would have never found out that I'm resilient, that I am a fighter. When the going gets tough and when like I'm pushed against the wall, like I don't freeze, I fight. I do whatever it takes to get back to peace. I do whatever it takes to just to find my balance again. I would have never discovered that had I not gone through the thing. So it's so important to remember like if you are going through something hard, you don't understand like the level of strength that you will acquire if you just keep moving forward. And then as life goes on and things will get scary again, like you have something to pull from because I'm like, oh my God, if I made it through that, like I can make it through anything so just having to learn to have a pace and to be okay with every season because yeah like right now I think I would be in a I like to call it like a season of conditioning because I think where I'm going to be next is going to require a different level of focus a different level of discernment and just a, a better version of myself so pacing has been pretty much my theme for the past few months my favorite thing so far is that nothing from my past nothing about what I've been through, or even the good things, like my giftings, my creative ability, my leadership, which is something I'm embracing. All of these things that make up who I am, that I've discovered in a healthy way, have allowed me to say, oh man, the bow, the package, the gift that I could give to anybody about me is me. <laughs> it, it's me. I, I am the gift. You are the gift. Who you are, what you've been through, your experiences, your shortcomings, your wins, your triumphs. Everything that you've been through and everything that you will go through makes up who you are. And the bad things, if you see them right, can be used to help somebody else who might be experiencing bad things in their life. But because you're still standing, they can say, oh man, they made it through. And if they did, I can make it through too. I'm just excited to keep sharing my fight and my battle and I'm documenting it and I want to help people as much as I can because you can get through all of it. You know, God doesn't put anything in front of you that you can't push past. We are predestined to fight every battle and win them. So that's just kind of what I've been learning about myself. I'm a fighter, I'm resilient, I have the support system. Uh, and even if I didn't have, you know, the people that I have around me, which are amazing and they, are, they support me so much, but even God is just enough to get me through what I'm going through. Nothing is going anywhere. Everything that you're supposed to have is gonna to come to you, but you also have to do the work. You have to face you. You have to face the little kid in you. And you really, sometimes I have to look in the mirror and just be like, it's okay. It's totally fine. You got it. And the beautiful thing about God's grace is that he gives you the things moments at a time where it's not too much. It may feel overwhelming because you might be triggered, but he's right there with you. And just knowing that fact as you're going through it is like a, you just take a deep breath and you take it moment by moment. There was more to me than what I thought. There was more to my life than the way I was living and operating. And, and I was like, man, I want, I want that. I, I, when I say that, I mean who God created me to be. I wanted to find out what that was for me. If you're watching this right now and you want to stop and just let God in to your situation, I promise you it will be the best decision that you ever make. There's no decision that you can make that will be greater than this decision. And it's so simple. You don't have to have perfect language. You don't have to say a, a prayer a certain way. All you have to do is stop and let Jesus into your heart. You just have to stop and lay down your life and put down your ways and say, God, come into my situation. So it's so simple. You just say, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I understand that without you, I am sinful. I understand that without you, I am directionless and I need help. I ask that you would come into my heart 
and that you would be my Lord, that you would be my Savior, that you would be the director of my steps, that you would be the guidance and the light to my path. I ask that you would live in me today and guide me from here on out. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. You saying that just invited him into your heart. You just opened the door. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Will you answer? And many of you just answered, and your life will never be the same. Family, praying that prayer makes all the difference. I can tell you from my experience that my life truly began like for real, for real, it began when I made that decision. When I said, you know what, God? I wanna know who you made me to be. I wanna know who you created me to be. I wanna go after who you saw in that passage in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. So that means that there's a version of me that God knew before he even formed me in my mother's womb. And that is true for all of us. So as we go forward, my prayer is this, that we wouldn't just ask in this season, who am I? But we would ask in every season, God, who am I now? Who am I now? Who am I in this season? Who am I now that I've learned this from what you've revealed to me? And I believe that God's going to continue to unravel and to, to unfold who we really are and who he created us to be as we go through the journey. And sometimes, as we talked about in the video, it comes from learning who you're not. And it's a beautiful and incredible thing for us to know who God created us to be, but it's a journey that we get to walk out. So we invite you to journey with us. Every single Tuesday, we upload videos. And this video in particular, you're probably watching it like, man, this was not a podcast. What was this? This is what we call a concept video or a story video. And what it is is really for us to kind of just just reflect on these powerful, thought-provoking questions like, uh, you know, in, in the month one of, of launching Generation One, we put out a video called God Can Use You, and we really zeroed in on this topic about how God can use you in spite of, and God can use you because of. And you should go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. And also, uh, the month after that, we talked about the importance of mental health. So we're trying to bring you things like this, but we want to hear from you. So drop in the comments down below what you want to hear, what you want to see, and really where you feel like God is working on you in your life. Because we want to hear from you so that we can continue to speak into it and to have conversations about it. Because that's what this is all about. We want to grow together and truly become everything that God created us to be. Because in that is authority is power, is the fullness of life, and it's everything. We need it. So I want to invite you as you've done that right now also to build your faith in this moment. I'm going to put a QR code right here. It's on the screen right here. Scan it. Use your phone. And why are you Why are you sowing? What, what, what does this mean? To sow into what God's doing is not just so that we can continue to you know produce these videos and put out podcasts and, and go out and actually serve the community. It's really an opportunity and a, and a biblical principle for you to build your faith and to say, you know what, God, I'm not going to serve money. I'm not going to put my trust in money. I'm going to put my trust in the economy of heaven that says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. And even when it seems like money is the thing that, that I need in order to pay my bills and, and to do this, God, I know that it came from you and that every increase from here will continue to come from you. So I invite you right now to build your faith by sowing into what we're doing here at Generation One and all of what we're doing at One. It's a blessing and to be a part of what God's doing and to sow into good ground is a blessing. Those who sow bountifully will reap bountifully. Those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly. I want everything that God has for me. I don't want anything less than that. I want everything that God has destined for my life. So I encourage you to get in on this because it's crucial and it's necessary, especially as we continue to walk out becoming everything that God created us to be. But family, we love you. If you're not following Generation One on Instagram and TikTok, right now, go at Generation One Clips, search it in your phone, pull it up, at Generation One Clips. I'm gonna pause and wait for you. I'm waiting right here. At Generation One Clips on Instagram. Okay, cool, cool. You followed it? You followed it? Did you follow it? Drop in the comments if you followed it. Drop in the comments down below if you follow Generation One Clips on Instagram and on TikTok. Drop it down below, because I'm gonna be watching. And who knows, we might send you a message. We might send you a message. But we love you so much. We're so grateful that you tuned in for this. We will catch you next Tuesday. See you then. Peace.